smart folder looks like a folder, but it's not a folder. It's just a saved search and it's not going to be smart unless you give it smart parameters. Let me give you my ideas. You can create smart folders in 30 seconds. You don't believe me? Then let's start on the timer. To create a smart folder, open up a new finder window on the location where you want to search and just type something. It doesn't even need to be connected to the search. The point is to reach this window. You can also get there if you open up the file menu and select new smart folder. Either way, you will end up here. And all you need to do here is to set up the parameters and then hit the plus button to save this search into a smart folder. Folder which you can be visiting over and over and it will be automatically updating. That's the whole point of smart folders. Anyway, that was the 30 second tutorial. And as I told you, the smart folder is not going to be smart unless you give it smart ideas. And it's exactly what I want to show you in this video and give you some practical examples. My first example is to simply show the files I have recently opened. So I'll change the name here into last open date and then I'll set the period. It can go back to one year, but I'll put something like within seven days. You'll most likely be opening files over and over and work on the same things. And thanks to this folder, you'll find them all in one place. So let's save it. I will call it recent seven. By default, the smart folder is saving somewhere in the library in the folder called saved searches. You can of course save it wherever you want and work with this as a physical folder. But once you tick on this one and add it to the sidebar, you don't really need the folder at all. So you can ignore where is it saved because it's not gonna be taking any storage. Now we have it easily accessible from the sidebar. But if you ever wish to change the criteria, you can easily do that. Simply right click it and select show search criteria. Here you can adjust the parameters and save it again. And now of course the name doesn't match. So let's right click it again and rename it to recent 10. You can also do something similar with apps and create an app launcher. So I'll go to my applications folder and create a new smart folder there. As a criteria I will switch to kind and set it to be application. Now it will list me all of my applications, but it's not so useful. I can filter it out again. Click the plus button and here you can set more criteria. I'll do the same as before and search only for the recently opened applications. So I can again put here maybe 10 days. I can go even further and exclude applications I have in my dock, but that would require adding some search rules. And that would take quite a lot of time. I will tell you more about search rules in another example further in this video. So now let's save this as well. But for change, I want this folder to be accessible. So I will save it on the desktop instead of the library folder. The folder will appear somewhere under myself, but now I can take it and move it into the dock. This way I will get an app launcher of my recently used apps right from the dock. And not just from the dock. I can also put the same folder in the menu bar, as I showed you in the previous video. Another smart folder you can do is to filter by kind of a file. The kind can be document or maybe an image and you can even filter it as far as type of that image. But you are not limited to this. If you select other, you can type a specific app. So for example, I want to filter out only my Microsoft Word documents here. So I'll type it and it will list me only these documents. But interesting thing is that you can combine applications. If I press the plus button here and add pages, it's not going to show me anything because there is no file which can be both at the same time, pages and Word document. Let's remove this and I will instead have to use search rules. To do that, hold the option key on your keyboard and notice how this will change into three dots. Now click on it and it will give you different options. Here I have to set it up again. I will set the kind to be Word and then I will do the same thing for pages and set the kind to be pages. Now I can remove the criteria above and now it will show me documents from both of these applications, pages and board documents all combined together in one search. Next thing you can do is to search for large files. When you click the plus button there is no option for size, but you can select other and you will get a huge list of options. So just search for size. 
I can even tick on this one and add it to the list permanently if I use it often. But now let's set the parameters. I want the size to be greater than 1 GB because I want to find my largest files on the Mac that's great for cleaning. Because many times you will forget about your big files and they are sitting somewhere around your Mac. And thanks to that, you can sort it by size and you will straight away find them. Very interesting thing is that you can search inside of the files. So here instead of the size, I will switch into contents and add my keyword. I will type Sonoma and it will list me files including this keyword. But notice that it is not only in the title, it's checking for the word inside of the files and it can even identify it on the picture. That's great, you don't need to look for all of these files separately. And if you don't want to look for all the tips and tutorials about Mac, then subscribe to the channel and you will find it all in one place. But anyway, let's move on to my last tip, which is the ability to filter out all the documents which were downloaded from the back. Again, there is no such option in the list, but if you select other, you can find something called where from. So select that and here type HTML. That's all you need to do to separate your own files from the downloaded files. Because every single file which is downloaded contains in the info the website from where it came from. You can of course go more in details and select the specific website here. But I don't want to make this video too long. I encourage you to play more with smart folders, they can be really useful. And if you find any of my ideas useful, then give this video a like and I will make sure to bring you more tips in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you there.